Hey guys, Dr. Justin Marcajani here. Today we're gonna to be talking about N-acetylcysteine or NAC and its blood thinning benefits. We're gonna talk about blood thinning in general and why it is so important and the root causes of why your blood may be thick and coagulating. Before we dive in, please smash that like button. Really helps the search algorithm. Love to see your comments down below and love to know what you guys are thinking about the topic. Excellent. So let's dive in here. So NAC, we've done many videos on this topic before, but N-acetylcysteine is a derivative of an, the amino acid cysteine. Cysteine is found in a lot of animal products, meat, fish, eggs, nuts, seeds, um, and it's a powerful amino acid. It's the typical rate-limiting amino acid to make your body's most powerful antioxidant called glutathione. Glutathione is a tripeptide. You have cysteine, glutamine, and glycine. Again, cysteine tends to be the rate limiter. Again, glycine is going to be found more in, in collagen type of amino acids, connective tissue. And then you have um, glutamine, which will be found in muscle meat. But cysteine tends to be the more rate-limiting amino acid when it comes to glutathione. Now, the N-acetyl is just a kind of an add-on to the cysteine to help absorption. So when your body takes in the supplement version of cysteine, N-acetylcysteine, it just breaks off that NAC and converts it to cysteine in the body. So NAC is kind of... It was patented in the late 60s, early 70s. They made this derivative of cysteine. It essentially becomes the same thing that amino acids of cysteine become in your body. It's just that N-acetyl gets broken off, no big deal, and it just gets converted. So it came in the late 60s, early 70s. It was patented, and it was used initially out of the gates for Tylenol toxicity. Tylenol is very hard on your liver, and it depletes glutathione. And so when you take a lot of Tylenol, it can put you in liver failure. You go to a hospital, they're going to go put you on an IV of NAC right away to save your liver. And so NAC is very powerful. We've known this for a very long time. Over the years, we've known that it's been helpful for cystic fibrosis, any chronic um, lung issue, breathing issue, pneumonia, allergies, mucus. It's a natural mucolytic. So it breaks down mucus, allows better respiration. It's excellent to use in cold time. Anytime you have a cold or any type of breathing issue, it helps break down the mucus. It opens up the airways with quite a bit. It helps um, with antioxidant and oxidative stress in that area because it's a powerful antioxidant precursor. So it helps neutralize oxidative stress and inflammation. And also NAC does decrease virus replication. So if you have any virus issues, it makes it harder for the virus to replicate and grow. And typically, as you see more viral replication, you see more symptoms. So keep that in the back of your head. Now, that being said, NAC is powerful for its blood thinning effects for a lot of different reasons. It's an antioxidant. So when you have oxidative stress, Oxidative stress is typically going to happen side by side inflammation. So the more inflammation that's present, you get platelet aggregation. The platelets tend to stick together. And you, as they stick, you start to develop clots or slower blood flow. And of course, as you get more and more platelets, you can in more and more inflammation, you can eventually develop full on clots. So as you make the blood less sticky by decreasing the platelet aggregation, you improve blood flow. A couple of studies here out of the gate just to highlight. This is the effects of NAC on blood coagulation and platelet function in patients undergoing repair of an abdominal aorta. So now this is the extreme end. This is a surgery. So you got to look at the literature and you got to try to gleam and say, hey, is this something that could benefit me in my day in, day out life? Absolutely, I think. But out of the gate, you can see here NAC has anticoagulant and platelet inhibiting properties. So again, platelets are going to form clots um, and when they start sticking together, platelets are that building block for forming clots. And so when you have lots of platelet aggregation happening, they start to stick together, they're going to form clots. And so you can see it's inhibiting effects and it's anticoagulant effects. And again, this is in a surgery, but we're talking about things even subclinical to that. So the thinking is if they can do it during a surgery, it should help us in our day in, day out life, which is really cool. Another good one here, looking at the potent thrombolytic effect of... N acetylcysteine in arterial thrombi. And again, a thrombus is a clot, just an FYI. And so then when you look at platelets, just to give you the so platelets are gonna be the raw material for clotting factors. So platelets can go through our body and not form a clot. And then when you start to have the aggregation start to happening, that's where a clot starts to form. And the question is what drives the platelets to clot? Many times it's gonna be inflammation. And so when you have things like NAC, that can prevent those platelets from aggregating and it's gonna prevent that clot from forming. So a couple of things right here, you'll see here NAC intravenously 
promotes the lysis of arterial thrombi. What is lysis? That means to break down. So it's like a clot buster, which is pretty cool. And they even did it when, with the, when they were resistant to conventional approaches, which is pretty cool. So when medication didn't work, it was very helpful. So very cool. Provide evidence that NAC is effective and safe alternative to currently available thrombolytic agents, which is nice. Very cool. Um, a couple other things here. This is the busting the clots and clearing up chemical mystery. In this interesting article, they talked about maybe it wasn't NAC. Maybe it was this dye NAC. The question is, can NAC convert to this dye NAC? I wonder, right? Couldn't really find much online. We know the data shows there's benefits over here in other articles. So I'm thinking that this dye NAC compound, your body probably has the ability to convert some of this cysteine into a dye NAC. Just an FYI on that. So pretty cool with that out of the gates. Really interesting. So what's happening here? So when you create inflammation in your body, what's the biggest thing that's going to drive inflammation? High insulin and high blood sugar is going to be one of the biggest things that's drive inflammation, okay? Makes your cells sticky. When you have insulin resistance and high blood sugar, you start to see peripheral neuropathy, poor blood flow in the extremities, poor blood flow in the eyes and the very small microvasculature. So high blood flow is going to be one of the big, I'm sorry, uh, high insulin, high blood sugar is going to be one of the things that impacts blood flow in, in the extreme extremities and in the very small microvascular vasculature. Now, when you have high blood sugar, that creates advanced glycation end products, ages. Now, that's going to create a lot of oxidative stress. So when you have potent things that are antioxidants, one of your most powerful antioxidants will be glutathione. So when you provide building blocks for glutathione, not just exogenous glutathione, but actual building blocks for it, that's going to definitely help your body's ability to neutralize oxidative stress. The same thing when you eat like meat and you have that kind of that charring on the outside, that's called heterocytic amines. That charring is oxidation. The whole, some research shows that, but if you eat a salad or have some green vegetables with it, that actually neutralizes the oxidation from the charring. So I'm looking at the NAC kind of as a similar way. You're increasing your body's raw material to make the most powerful antioxidant and to help neutralize some of that. And also by doing that, you're also decreasing the platelet aggregation and all that coagulation. Now, we can also do extra good fats like extra omega-3s and good healthy fats can be very helpful with thinning out our blood and being very helpful. Now, the bigger fats that are going to cause problems are going to be trans fats because one, they're incredibly oxidized because they are hydrogenated and those fats are made more inflexible, which gives it longer shelf life. So hydrogenated trans fats are going to be problematic and they're going to cause cells to get sticky. Excess linoleic acid or omega-6 fats, especially from refined vegetable oils, or seed oils, those are going to be more on the omega-6 side, and that will go more down that prostaglandin E2 pathway, which is a lot more inflammatory. And so excess omega-6, processed vegetable oils that turn into trans fats through safflower, canola, right? Think your margarines, think anything processed. Any liquid vegetable oils, they should be at room temperature liquid. When they start to go more solid, then that's the, the tell-all that they've been hydrogenated because the hydrogenation allows polyunsaturated vegetable oils and seed oils to become solid. If they're liquid, then they probably are not hydrogenated and they're probably not trans fat. Just think about that for the most part. Think of your margarines and a lot of those kind of things. And so your omega-6, your processed vegetable oils, trans fats, your high sugar, your high carbohydrate, anything more on the processed grains, flours, those kind of things. And then you can get more nuance afterwards with whole foods that may be just really high in carbs, whether it's starches, those type of things, potatoes, starches, high sugar fruits. Again, it's all going to be about balance, how much, and it's all going to be how res insulin resistant you are. The more resistant you are, the more high your fasting insulin is, the more high your one hour, two hour, three hour blood sugar is after a meal, the more insulin resistant you are, the more carb sensitive you have to be, meaning the more you have to be lower on the carbohydrate side. So my general recommendation, I'm going to put a link down below for some good NAC that I personally use that I think works really good. Um, NAC, I think is a building block of anyone's good, healthy supplement program. I think it's easy to put in there. It's cheaper than glutathione. It helps your body make endogenous or endogenous glutathione. You have exogenous through supplement, liposomal and acetyl or s acetyl and liposomal s acetyl and reduced. Those are your big three sources of glutathione. You take that exogenously. You take it in from the outside in, and then the NAC is also a building block so your body can endogenously make it. I mean, it makes it from the inside out. And so powerful way to get your glutathione up is the NAC. 
and then taking it exogenously as well if you have it in your budget. So I'll put links down below for that, guys. I'll put the scientific references down below. And again, just understand blood flow, very important for your brain, very important for your extremities. Sugar, processed sugar, glycation, oxidative stress, bad fats, these are going to help increase clotting. And the things that we're going to do by decreasing sugar, healthy fats, omega-3s, GLA from grass-fed meat, healthy fats from ghee or butter if you can tolerate the casein or any of the butter fats in there, and then healthy olive oil, avocado. Your monosaturated fats are also healthy as well. So links down below for the NAC. If you want to dive in deeper, great way to improve your um, blood flow. My favorites are NAC. Next would be ginger, fish oil, any of your systemic enzymes taken away from food like serapeptidase, lumbrokinase, natokinase are excellent. Uh, ginkgo, gochu cola, these are great herbs that are very helpful for blood flow as well. So put the link down below, guys, for my favorite NAC. And then also if you want to dive in and reach out and get more specific functional medicine support for whatever health issue you're dealing with, link will be down below to reach out to my staff to go to the next level. All right, guys, have a phenomenal day. Take care, y'all. Bye. Oh, a couple questions. Hold on. I get you guys answered here real quick. All right. Crowley's taking. So doses on NAC, I like about 1,500 milligrams to 2,000 milligrams. I think that's a good dose. If you go too high on NAC, you're going to get dry eyes. You're going to get dry mucous membranes. So don't go too high on the NAC, but anywhere between 1,500 to 2,000 milligrams is good. You can go up to 3,000 milligrams. Again, be careful of the dry mucous membranes. Um, Will NAC be effective if taken with food? Yes, it is an amino acid. It just may not be absorbed as fast, but it'll be effective. NAC is now called the drug in Denmark and cannot be purchased. Is that the country? Yeah, I mean, that's a country thing. NAC has technically been a drug for since the 60s per se, but the patent went up and it's a derivative of a natural amino acid. They're just adding an N-acetyl group to the cysteine. And so you can still get cysteine. So go and buy the amino acid cysteine, and you'll still get, I think, most of the benefit with that. Boyfriend recently tested high ApoB and CRP at three on inhaler. Uh, he just started taking NAC again. Would it help? Yeah, definitely would. Yeah, so if he's having breathing issues or inflammation issues, that should be helpful. Again, flush out your sinuses. That's a great way to make sure there's no allergens up there that's creating inflammation as well. I'm having uh, surgery next Friday. Should I stop NAC before? Most um, doctors, surgeons are going to want you off any blood thinner, whether it's like omega-3s or herbs. And so you'd want to let them know that you're on these type of blood thinning effects and they would know your history better than me. Some people, if they have high levels of clotting history or strokes, they may want you on a blood thinner. So let them know that, hey, these are the things that I'm on. These are the things that could potentially thin out my blood. They'll typically want you off them for at least two days beforehand. Should be out of your system by then but I would make sure they're in the loop. Again, I don't know your history regarding surgery, so let them know. Do you know any reputable vitamin B12 supplements? Unfortunately, the product I was using, liposomal B12, by Cytomatrix was discontinued. Um, yeah, I mean, reach out to Office at Justin Health. We have a lot of good products that are B12, whether it's a tri-B12, like a denosyl, hydroxyl, or methyl. Those are all good options on that front, or a sublingual. A lot of good options there, guys. All right, excellent questions. Coordinates are down below. Reach out if you need more help. Have an awesome day, guys. Take care, y'all. Bye now.